Hey, Tim here with PM Pro Learn to talk to you today about how to learn the flow of the PMP process framework. And we're talking about PMP hack number three. This is PM Pro Learn teaching you how to hack the PMP exam. So why do I need to learn the process flow anyway? Learning the flow of the PMP process framework is key to answering PMP exam questions correctly. Selecting the correct answer depends a lot on how well you can assess the question scenario with respect to the process framework. You must understand where the question places you in respect to the process framework and be able to answer what process group are you in, what process are you in, and finally, what process should come next. So let's talk first of all about how not to learn the process flow. Table 3 TAC 1 in the PMBOK guide is a great chart, but it provides a very linear view of the process framework and therefore some learners get the perception that project processes progress from one stage to another in a single series of sequential steps. However, this perception is incorrect and figure 3-2 in the PMBOK must be fully understood to grasp the concept that process groups and the processes within them are overlapping activities that occur all throughout the project. To gain the best understanding of project process flow, and to help remember the interaction between all five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, 47 processes, and 618 ITTOs, which stands for Inputs, Tools, Techniques, and Outputs, simply study the PM Pro Flow charts for each knowledge area. And here's an example. So how do those PM Pro Flow charts work? Well, they show you the process data flow diagram for each knowledge area, and there's 10 of them. The flow of all the key inputs and outputs is traced across all five process groups, showing you the interconnections and interdependencies with the other knowledge area processes, which there's 47 total processes, and they're shown on uh, across these 10 flow charts. Processes in the topic knowledge area are highlighted so you can see how one knowledge area interacts with others, and we'll, you'll see what this means in a moment. Colored shapes are used as on-page connectors to show the flow across the page because there's a lot going on, so we need to show you how things are connected on the page. And colored process blocks match the colors that are used for each process group throughout our PM Pro Learn curriculum. In other words, everything we talk about that's an initiating process, you're going to see a green color, planning is blue, executing is brown, monitoring controlling is purple, and closing is red. That helps keep you oriented every time we're talking about anything in the project management body of knowledge. It keeps you oriented to what process group you are in. So let's take a look at the flow chart for integration management. Now I'm going to go over this quickly. I'm not going to go over it in depth as we would in class, but I'm going to briefly show you how this flow chart works with animation in our classroom. So we start out the integration management knowledge area with the process called Develop Project Charter. And note that it is highlighted in green to show that this is an integration management process. There will be other processes on this page that are not part of integration management and they will not be highlighted. So to develop the project charter, we need a statement of work, a business case, and agreements, any existing agreements. The output of Develop Project Charter is a project charter. That's the main document. And that's an input to the next process called Develop PM Plan. And notice it is also highlighted. It's part of the integration management knowledge area. And we need outputs from other planning processes. Now, that's a pretty deep kind of topic to get into. And we'll get the, into that in class. But just for now, know that the input to Develop PM Plan is outputs from other planning processes. So the output of Develop PM Plan is the project manager plan. And notice that we have an on-page connector, a colored shape here that we're going to see somewhere else on this page to show you where all that's used. So the PM Plan, first of all, is an input to a process called Direct and Manage Project Work. And this is highlighted in yellow also because it's part of integration management. And now it's brown because we're an executing process group. And we also need approved change requests. And there's an on-page connector there, color dot, that shows you it comes from somewhere else. We're going to see on the page in a moment. And the output of direct and managed project work is change requests. We've got an on-page connector to show you where that goes. Work performance data, also another connector. And finally, deliverables. So let's take each one of these outputs of direct and managed project work and talk about where they go. So change requests is an input to a process called Perform Integrated Change Control. 
it's purple because we're now into monitoring controlling and it's highlighted because we're still talking about an integration management process and perform integrated uh, change control needs the project management plan as an input showing the uh, connector there on page connector and work performance reports and we'll see where that comes from with another on page connector in a moment the output of perform integrated change control is approved change requests and we see that the connector connects it back as an input to direct and manage project work and also the change log is an output of perform integrated change control the change log is an input then into another executing process because it's brown called manage stakeholder engagement notice that it's not highlighted because here we've jumped out of the integration management knowledge area and into another knowledge area and this would be stakeholder management but we're showing you how the process uh, flow works so we're, we're taking things out of integration into stakeholder management and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in a while so work performance data is the next uh, output of direct and managed project work that we want to uh, see where it goes and so it goes into all control processes now there are eight control processes in table 3 TAC 1 of the PMBOK such as control quality control risk control scope control schedule any process that starts with the word control is represented by this one purple box so all monitoring and controlling uh, control processes use work performance data they also use the PM plan again we've got that on page connector that shows you when the PM plan is created it's an input to perform integrated change control and also an input to all eight of our control processes so what happens in those control processes is work performance data is turned into work performance information and take our class and we'll talk to you all about how that occurs and what's happening there so work performance information is an input back into a highlighted process which means we're moving back into integration management and the process is called monitor and control project work it's purple because it's the monitoring and controlling uh, uh, process group monitor control project work also needs the PM plan as an input cost forecast schedule forecast and validated changes and we'll see on page where validated changes come from and the output of monitor control project work is work performance reports and notice the colored shape connects it back over here so you see that monitor control project work produces work performance reports and one of the places they're used is back here into integrated uh, perform integrated change control and change requests are on also an output of monitor control project work and we've also seen that change requests are an input to perform integrated change control so where do those work performance reports go besides performing integrated change control they're used in several other processes in the process framework for stakeholder awareness and trend analysis so the deliverables is the last output of direct and managed project work with that on-page connector and let's see where that goes deliverables once they're created are an input to a process called control quality notice it's purple we're in monitoring trolling but it's not highlighted because it is not in the integration management knowledge area it's part of the the uh, quality knowledge area and control quality needs the project management plan as an input it also needs approved change requests as an input and work performance data as an input and you can go find those color connectors on the page and see where they came from the output of control quality is verified deliverables once deliverables are uh, inspected internally they become a verified deliverable and also validated changes are now put any change any approved change request that we uh, implement on the project we need to check the quality of it and if the approved change request had the desired uh, output on the project it becomes a validated change and we notice the yellow dot there connects it as an input to monitor and control project work because validated changes is something we would want to report out to our stakeholders in a work performance report also work performance information is now put a control quality and we see that all work performance information is an input in the monitor control project work so those verified deliverables once they're created they're an input to a process called validate scope and validate scope is another monitoring controlling process not highlighted because it's in the scope knowledge area not integration management but once we validate scope with a customer this is where the customer kind of takes their test drive and make sure that they they in fact agree that our verified deliverables meet the scope of the of the project what we agreed to deliver and if they do they become accepted deliverables and those accepted deliverables 
or an input back into a highlighted process. So back into integration management, close project or phase. In other words, once all the deliverables on the project are accepted, that would trigger this process called close project or phase. And close project or phase also uses the PM plan. We've got that on page connector to show that when it's created, it becomes an input to multiple processes. And the output of closed project or phase is called final product service or result transition. This is where we're giving uh, the final deliverable product or service or result over to the customer. And that is the end of the project. And so this flow chart shows you the entire integration management knowledge area, all the processes, all the inputs uh, and outputs, and the flow in between uh, integration processes and non-integration processes. And really, this whole chart shows you Project Management 101 from start, which is develop project charter, to the end of the project. So we've got 10 of those, one for each knowledge area. We teach them in much more depth during our PMP bootcamp training and in our self-paced courses. So visit us at pmprolearn.com for more PMP training and more of those knowledge area charts to make that flow easy for you to understand. Thanks. We'll see you on the next PMP hack video.